So I just arrived in the boat and there's no power. Probably because yesterday was a Sunday and today is a holiday. And our landlord there turns off the electricity on Sundays. But not to worry, we have enough to do where we don't need power and worst case for the heater, I can try to use the batteries. So let's go and do that right now. First thing to do is to get the batteries out of the winter storage. And while we're at it, let's have a look at the voltage. 12.87, well, not too bad if you think that two months earlier it was at 12.91. So a drop of only 0 0.04 volts over two months, that's pretty good. And we have a heater because I managed to hook up one of my fireflies to the diesel heater. So let's see how long it lasts. In fact, it lasted for two entire days and still had plenty of charge in it. Right now, let's get to work. First, I put the floorboards back in the aft cabin after the paint had cured. Next, I did some odd jobs for which there is usually no time, such as removing some of those AC wires that still run through the boat. I opened up the enclosure behind the steering wheel to gain access to the ignition lock cylinder, which we're gonna need soon when starting to work on the engine. Mm -hmm. And of course, you don't need electricity for painting. Here first the recently welded window frames. And then moving on to the ceiling of the forward cabin. And I know I've tortured you enough over the last few videos with painting, but a first coat is always fun to watch, so here you go. Here then, on another day, I start with sanding the walls and then back to painting. I also put a coat of paint onto the recently finished holes for the new hatches. Here's the larger one. And this is the smaller one. Right, so the first coat of paint is done and dry. So what I'm gonna do today is clean up everything a little and then put down a second coat of paint. And I'm gonna do this off camera because second coats of paint are just not good material for YouTube videos. So see you when it's done. And there you have it. For our next task, we find ourselves in the engine room where we are going to attempt to remove those isolation plates that are stuck to the ceiling. At first I thought they contain asbestos, which is extremely harmful if you were to breathe it in, but it turns out they are simply medium density fiber plates, or short MDF. Alright then, let's get started. First I need to get easier access. Luckily, recently I noticed that the big central floor plate, the one that sits right above the engine, is removable. So here I go opening this up for the first time. I'll start by removing the MDF plates on this floorboard.
Next come the ones that are stuck to ceiling panels, which are not removable. And right away you can see the water damage that has occurred over the years, mainly on the port and starboard sides of the engine room. Here again a big area in the corner. For the most part the wood of these panels is still relatively solid, so I'm hoping that I can get away for a while with just drying out the engine room completely, so that we can really tackle this issue over the next fall and winter. There is one area here where the wood of the ceiling panels has the consistency of, I would say, cake. Not really sure what's the best to do here, so I started by just removing some of it and then left it as it is for now. Alright, now let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this episode. So we got ourselves a new plasma cutter, suitable for cutting steel up to 12mm, and a second-hand air compressor, which is needed to operate the plasma cutter. Of course, before bringing everything to the boat, we tested it at home, where it worked perfectly. So there's no reason why it wouldn't work just as well once we are at the bone, right? So let's see, power on, put it to maximum 40 amps to get a nice clean cut, and... This doesn't seem right. It seems that we can't get a continuous arc going on the plasma cutter. And the fact that the light was flickering while using it gave us an indication of what was the issue. So we progressively reduced the power until we got the plasma cutter to build a continuous arc. Which unfortunately turned out way too low to cut 5mm steel in a proper manner. Anyway, long story short, we managed to cut the piece with the plasma cutter but it was a struggle, to put it mildly. Initially, I got the plasma cutter hoping to save some time, but like this it ended up taking us about 2 hours to cut this piece. And there you have it. And just for the record, this is not how this is supposed to look after plasma cutting. Anyway, moving on by cleaning the cut with the angle grinder. Then we can unpack our new 5mm steel plates. Mark the areas to cut away directly on the steel plate. I will grind the edges of the two metals to be welded together into a wedge. In this way we leave some room for the weld to spread out and neatly combine the two pieces. Alright, now let's move on to the welding. First from the inside, and then on the outside. Unfortunately, we did not manage to finish this in this week, so you're gonna have to wait until next week to see the result. On another day, I attempted to take care of the second hole in the hull, while adapting the workflow according to what we learned the previous day. This time, I cut the metal with the angle grinder first, to leave only a small area to do for the plasma cutter. In this way, even with a struggling plasma cutter, it was relatively easy to cut this piece. I then repeat the same process of cutting the new steel into shape and grinding a wedge on the parts that need to be welded together. And then let's move on to the welding. And I'll be honest with you, I spent most of that day trying to get nice, solid, continuous welds on that piece. Always welding, inspecting, grinding away what I was not happy with, then welding again, and so on and so forth. In the end, reality had caught up with me, and given the weather situation, and the fact that this is a weekly program, I'm very sad to say that I was not able to finish this 
in any way shape or form so that I would feel comfortable showing it to you. So here again I'm afraid we're gonna have to wait until next week to see the result. Alright now moving on to the final task of this video which I actually did in the beginning of this week and which is to attach the hatch in the aft cabin or specifically here trimming the screws to the right length. After measuring the maximum clearance I have inside the nut I mark at which point the screw comes out on the other side of the frame. Then I add to that length the clearance I need for the nut to go on and mark the place to cut with a piece of tape. I smoothen the edges of the cut screw with the sandpaper disc and there you go, ready to put in. And it fits perfectly. I then cut and trim the remaining of the screws I need and put a border of tape around the circumference of the hatch. I then apply the sealant to the appropriate area and for this I use Sikaflex 552 because it remains elastic even after curing completely. I then use a spatula to flatten the sealant, hoping that by this I can help it spread more evenly. I then gently put the hatch back in place and put the screws back in. Next put the nuts on from the other side. Then I remove the tape from outside and clean everything up. And there you go. And that's all that happened in this week. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again next week.